In this example, we will solve an important class of circuits containing dependent sources. Consider this circuit shown here. Circuits such as this one often arise in the modeling of real world devices such as transistors or modeling of complex electronic circuit components such as amplifiers. In this given circuit, we have one independent voltage source and we have one dependent source. There is an arrow inside the symbol. This means this is a dependent current source and the amplitude of this current source is in terms of a circuit voltage. So this circuit component is a voltage controlled current source. Recall that the current in this branch of the circuit is zero. This is because there is no return path for this current. Thus in this circuit we have the input side and this is the output side and the coupling between input and output is via the dependent source only. Let's see how to solve this circuit from first principle using Kirchhoff current law, Kirchhoff voltage law and Ohm's law. The procedure is shown here. Uh, some voltages and currents are given and we will reuse these. So the first step is to label the branch currents. So here we have three elements in series and we can label this current as IS. The current through this branch is already labeled as I1. This branch is I2. We have a current source, a dependent current source in this branch. Thus, we already know the value of the current. The next step is to mark the voltage polarities across the resistors. So the end where the current enters is labeled higher potential and the end where the current leaves is lower potential. So similarly here we have a plus minus and a plus and minus. In this circuit we can see that we have four unknown variables which are V delta, I s, I 1 and I 2. Therefore we need to write four circuit equations to be able to solve this circuit. Next step is to identify loops and then apply Kirchhoff voltage law to the loops. So we identify this loop and we can arbitrarily assume, uh, assume direction as follows. So this is loop A and also we have two loops here but we will choose to uh, write Kirchhoff voltage law for this loop only and then this is one node drawn stretched out so we will label this node as node x and apply Kirchhoff current law here. The problem is now set up and we are ready to write the circuit equations. So let's apply Kirchhoff voltage law to loop A. Recall that KVL states that the algebraic sum of voltages around a closed path is zero and we use a positive sign for voltage drop following passive sign convention. We can start at the independent voltage source. So going from minus to plus is a voltage rise and voltage rise is written with a minus sign. So the first term is minus 18. Going from plus to minus is a voltage drop and we use Ohm's law to write the value of the voltage drop. So this gives 12 I S and then this is another voltage drop across the 6 Ohm resistor. So this is given by 6 I S is equal to 0. Let's apply Kirchhoff voltage law to loop B. We can start at any circuit component. Suppose we start at the 5 ohm resistor. So going from plus to minus is a voltage drop. We get plus 5 I2. And now going from minus to plus is a voltage rise. So we get minus 10 I1 is equal to 0. Let's apply Ohm's law to the 6 ohm resistor. 
So ohms, the voltage drop across this resistor is this parameter V delta, which controls the magnitude of the dependent source. So here we have V delta is six times I S. And the last equation is obtained by applying Kirchhoff current law to the top node. So KCL states that the sum of currents entering a node is equal to sum of currents leaving a node. We can see that at this node X, we have three currents leaving the node. Therefore, what we get is V delta by two plus I one plus I two is equal to zero. Thus, we have the four circuit equations and these can be solved to obtain the values of the parameters. We can solve these equations using a scientific calculator and this is shown here. So by entering these equations and using the solve command, the solution can be obtained as shown here. Note that if we obtain a minus value for the current, then this means that in reality, the current is flowing in the opposite direction. Therefore, using the calculator, we can show that V delta is six volts, I one is minus one amp, I two is minus two amp, and I S is one amp. From the circuit, we can see that this current source will produce current that goes through the 10 ohm resistor and the 5 ohm resistor in the direction from bottom to top. And since this is opposite to the direction of the assumed current, we get negative values for I1 and I2. And this means that in reality, there will be a 1 amp current flowing this way and a 2 amp current flowing this way through the 5 ohm resistor. Next, we solve the same circuit efficiently using voltage and or current division principles. Recall that the current in this part of the circuit is zero because there is no return path for this current. This means that the input side and output side are only coupled via the dependent source. On the input side, we can see that the six ohm and the 12 ohm resistors are in series and are form, forming a voltage divider. Thus, we can use voltage division principle to write an expression for V delta directly. So V delta is the voltage drop across the six ohm resistor. So we have six in the numerator. In the denominator, we have the equivalent resistance, which is the sum of the resistors connected in series. So this is 12 plus six. And this voltage divider is operating on the 18 volt source. So this gives us 6 volt. Looking at the output side, we can see that this current source has two resistors in parallel. Therefore, this is a current divider. And we can use the current division principle to write expressions for I1 and I2 directly. This can be done as follows. So I1 is in the current division principle, the constant of proportionality is opposite to that of voltage division principle. So in the numerator, we have the equivalent resistance, which is the resistance of the resistors in parallel. So this is given by 10 parallel five. In the denominator, we have the resistor of interest through which we are trying to determine the current. So this is 10 and then this is operating over the this current source. So we have V delta over two. Now this current source will actually produce current flowing through this resistor in the opposite direction to I1. Therefore, we must write a minus sign with the current source magnitude. So this can be easily solved. Uh, the equivalent resistance of two resistors in parallel is R1, R2 over R1 plus R2. This is a simplified form of this formula for two resistors. So this value of 
10 parallel 5 can be obtained using this and this is given by 50 over 15 divided by 10 and V delta is 6 volts so this is minus 3 and this gives minus 1 amp. Similarly we can write an expression for I2 directly without having to solve the circuit so I2 is 10 parallel 5 now in the denominator we have the 5 ohm resistor and then similar to before minus V delta over 2 and then substituting the values this is 50 over 15 divided by 5 multiplied by minus 3 and this gives 2 amp as before so this confirms the solution